Okay, Norwich 93 CMP back with the 1911 series. I just cleaned, <laughs> it took me an hour, but I just cleaned the whole slide assembly for the 1911 A1. <clears throat> and I just wanted to show you how dirty it was. And by cleaning it out, by taking it apart the way I told you to take it apart in the areas to clean out, when you, when you start getting in there, and I just want to show you one other thing too. I didn't tell you about this, but I use like pins and then I, I get into all the nooks and crannies on top of, um, using all the Q-tips, the, the barrels of the Q-tips, the actual heads, breaking them a little bit, uh, and the paper towels and a little bit of denatured alcohol. I got a lot of stuff out. Um, it's amazing. And the gun wasn't that bad. The barrel looked bad and it was actually just little bits of crud from somebody firing it and just not cleaning it. And thank God it came out really nice. But now we're going to do the reassembly. Um, one of the first things I wanted to talk about, which is pretty important, is my link came out with my pin uh, to retain it. And sometimes in this area, there'll be some painting to keep the pin in. Don't take the pin out. Leave it in there if you can clean around it if it's loose like this one was and it basically fell out without any pressure then take it apart it's fine um it only goes in one way as far well the link itself large part goes to the bottom it's going to match this curve i'm actually gonna put my finger see how it was falling out i had to put my finger just to hold it for you um this hole matches that curve if you try to put it in backwards, it's not gonna match up and look nice and sexy. Okay, so my pin's back in my barrel. I lay it down um, and put it inverted because why I'm gonna put that together, that same orientation. I'm gonna work with the back of the slide right now. Um, the first thing I do is the ejector because I've <laughs> forgotten it before um, and put the firing pin in and the plate on and everything else and realize that oh, there's the ejector. So it's nice and clean. Um, I don't recommend putting any uh, oils on it. That, that's just me. I have a dehumidifier, so I'll put it in straight. But if you do, just you know, a light coat around the points that, that touch. Uh, nothing up here, though. And I put it in straight away. Now, I think this one came out a little tougher. And it's a little, little bit bound in there because it's got the, the curve to it, which is fine. Um, I'm just going to play with it gently. And I may have to change the orientation a little bit. It's going to make a fool out of me, right? Look at that. All right, let's try some. See how it bends a little bit? It's got a little bend to it. Spring, spring to it. All right, I got started. Um, now I can push it home, watch your fingers. Now on the inside, I'm looking right here and I'm just going to make sure once I push it in that it clears it. This needs a little persuading. I don't recommend this, but if you do non marring, see how it's sticking out a little bit. Double check the inside. I'm good to go with my my cut in there. Now I talked to you about the firing pin before. I did clean everything. When I put it on, it's loose on both ends. Like I said, I've seen them where they're a little bit tighter. Maybe it's like replacement springs. Um, but if you have a tight portion, put that onto the, the firing pin. Pointing it up in the air. Hold on. Pointing it up in the air into the firing pin hole. Now it's under pressure a little bit. When I put my finger on it, the plate only goes in one way. So the notch portion goes to the uh, to the left as you're looking down the barrel. We're looking this way out the muzzle. And the curvature um, will be towards us, towards the camera, okay? So I just start it in, in the area and I get my Handy dandy little little screwdriver, put a little bit of pressure on it, make sure it's seated, cover it, 
and I'm pushing my plate up and in. Now my plate's not going. And it's not nothing to do with the the firing pin. It's the it's the ejector. So I'm gonna just remove it all and just double check my clearances. Now I'm looking, you know what? It's a little bit too far. And I had a feeling I did that, of course. So I'm just gonna back it out ever so slightly. And you can even keep the firing pin out, check it first. Should go in, see how it went in nice and easy, slid out. So now I'm good to go. I should have did it the first time around, right? All right, putting the firing pin back in, getting it started. Pressing down, covering, moving the plate all the way up now. Okay, now it's caught, see? Still put my finger over just in case it comes out and she went flush. And that's another thing I wanted to show you is that this area here is now flush or inside more. There's no lip on there to catch on or anything. My firing pins in there, I should do a little test on that. Get my dirty. Oh, let's see how it's falling out nice. Works good. See how now it's clean? Like the plate wants to fall out under its, under its own. That's the exact way you want that. After you fire it, the ejector is going to move around a little bit and keep it in a little bit better. But now that the whole rear portion of the slide is now done. Now what do we do? Now we put the slide down and just like we took it apart upside down, that's the way I put it back together. Take the barrel with the link in the down position. Go all the way back. Slid into locking lugs and basically stayed in that position. Okay. Now, uh, something I didn't talk about before when we took it apart is the operating spring. One side is open, it's just like a cut loop, coil, excuse me, and this one's tapered together, okay? That end is a little tighter and it goes on the plunger and it'll stay. Slide it all the way down, slide it home, and it's together. From the inside, over top of the link and just drop it down leave it alone it's perfectly fine this is when i you could put your bushing in earlier but it just sometimes gets in the way of putting the barrel in so i don't do it that way now we took it out in the three o'clock position i believe we did took it about the three o'clock position so that's the same way we're going to put it back in there's the nub it's facing up towards the spring on the barrel bushing let's see now we're going to swing it through the six o'clock position to the nine o'clock position and it's locked it won't it's not coming out towards the muzzle end all right that's good to go this is when you take your dirty frame that i haven't cleaned yet And in the, I do this in the upside down position, and I'm going to show you why. It's basically, it's because of the link. If I put this together in that hole, it won't line up. But when I flip it over and then move it backwards, you'll see the link slide into position. And that's when we'll put the slide stop in. This is the reason why I do these things. All right, putting it on nice and gently. Get a little resistance. I went past it. Now, if you look in the hole, there's the back part of the barrel link where it comes off the barrel and the pins are going to uh, be in there. There's that half moon area that I was talking about earlier where the link lines up with the bottom part of the barrel. And then it's it's open. It's open because the link is down. If I move it slightly forward, you see the link now? Okay. Now watch. I'm going to leave this like this. I'm going to flip it over. Now the link is fallen. I'm trying to get the color in there for you so you can see the hole. All right. Now that's the back of the barrel to the right of the hole, and I'm sliding back. See the link starting to appear in there? That's the back of the link. Now you see the hole of the link to, starting to appear, and I'm going back. Oh, I'm pushing the barrel a little bit with my, my finger here. And I have a perfect hole. Notice the dismount notch is in the perfect position. This is when I take my slide stop and I'm holding the back of it too. 
and I'm putting it in. It's, it's through the link. I'm keeping it up in the air towards the camera. I'm, I'm avoiding the idiot marks. And now I go towards the little plunger that's coming out of the side. That's when I'm holding it here and pushing up towards the sky. And I broke the plunger and now I push it straight in. It's not all the way in yet. I gotta finagle it a little bit. All right, she fell in there. Now you look, see it's flush. That's how you avoid doing the idiot marks. Now the slide will go all the way forward with it. Now put the safety on. Now she's not gonna move or fire, or pinch your fingers in there. My slide stopped stuck in, in, the, in the proper position. Now I can finish off. Now you can see all the garbage around my, my workspace. Put the cap on, it's under pressure. And I'm going from the nine o'clock position to the six. This is a tough spring. It's gonna click in, clicks in nice and flush, it's locked. I do a visual inspection, it's closed there. The back right here is all nice and flush. And it's mating fine. My slide stop is on the inside of the slide itself. It's flush right here. There's no, there's no air gaps there. And that's good to go. But we're gonna do a quick functions check just to make sure everything internally is working. Another thing I look at too is the barrel's up towards us. It's locked into position. You can see it's up to the, the ceiling of the um, ejection port. Take it off safe and I'm racking it. I'm watching the barrel. If you look real close, it's dropping. See how it drops out of the way right there? That's clearing the lugs up here so that it can operate. Bring it all the way back. Engage the slide stop. It stops. I'm going to pull it down and ride the slide forward. Not ride the slide forward. Let the slide go forward. And it goes. That's how to reassemble the 1911A1 slide and then reinstall it back onto your pistol.